In this video, we're going to take a look at the catch exception library and how we can use it. We're then going to review some of the benefits that it offers us when it comes to testing for exceptions. In a previous video, I've taken a look at how we would typically be testing for exceptions using this expected keyword after the annotation of test. I'll leave the link to this video in the description. If, if like. we take a look at the class that we'll be testing, it's called Race Report Processor, and essentially it creates a report for the outcome of a race between different cars. The generate report method will take in two strings. First is a file location for all the drivers, and then second is a file location for all the race performance statistics. First, it will read in the driver file location file into a list of different drivers. And then second, it will do the exact same thing for the race performance by reading in the content of that file into a list of race. And then finally, it will combine the driver and the race into a report. And this would typically include, you know, the driver's name, their age, where they finished, also what their time was and their fastest lap. So this is the main method that we will be testing. And one thing to note here is that we're reading in two separate files. And typically when you have reading files in that an IO exception is thrown, possibly because that file is not found. So, so we can see that this method here is throwing an exception and this is what we would like to test within the next part. So if I move into the race report processor test, we're going to begin writing our test for this exception. One thing to note is that I've created these two directories called drivers and then driver CSV and race performance, race CSV. They're empty files, but we'll just use them for the understanding of our tests. So the first test I'm going to write will be for a file not found exception uh, for one of these files. So I've instantiated a race report processor I've then defined two strings, one which is the driver file, and this perfectly points to our file up here. And then the second for the race performance file, which points up here. And now if I were to run this method, we would expect it to be perfectly fine. There's no assertions being made at all. So I'm just going to run this first one. So we can see that the test has passed. What I'd now like to do is to make this test fail by changing the name of this CSV. So I'm just going to add the letter S. We can see that it has failed with a file not found exception for that driver's CSV file. So to make it pass, I will do expected file not found exception.class. And now the test passes. So the current style we've used for testing for this exception presents us with three current problems. The first problem is that we don't actually know why this file not found exception was actually thrown. It could be from that first file that we're reading in, or it could be from the second file. The second problem is that once that exception is thrown, the test is ended. So we can't actually assert upon any other behaviors or verify any other behaviors from our method call. And finally, the appearance of our test doesn't really follow that same given when then structure that we're used to seeing with a unit test. And these three problems are, are what we're going to try resolve with the catch exception package from Google Codes. So to begin with the catch exception package, you'll have to ensure that it's installed within your application. So if I go to my pom.xml file, I can see the dependency for it, which I've taken from the Maven repository website. If I move back into the test class, we're now going to begin refactoring our test to make use of the catch exception package. So the first keyword we use with the catch exception package is actually called catch exception. And the first argument that the catch exception keyword takes in is the class that we will be calling to throw the actual exception. So for our case, it's report processor. And 
And then after that first argument, we will then actually call the method that we expect to throw the exception. So for our case, it will be generate report, and then passing in the driver file and the race file. And remember here that we have drivers CSV, so we expect that file not found to be thrown. So now what, what the catch exception package does is rather than actually throw the exception to the test, it will instead catch the exception within this catch exception block. So if I run this test, we can expect it to pass. So your next question might be, how do we assert upon the exception that's being thrown in theory by this generate report method? And we can do that by using the keyword of caught exception from this catch exception package. So from this, I will assert upon the caught exception. I'll do assert true. I will type in caught exception. And what I can assert upon our caught exception is what instance type that it is. So I can type instance off and then file not found exception. And that will be our first assertion. We can see that the test is passing. If I were to change the test to have a different type of instance of exception, we can expect the test to fail. So for example, we could have runtime exception, and this would cause it to fail. Now, despite using the catch exception library, we still don't actually know where this file not found exception was thrown. Was it thrown because of the driver file or because of the race file? The further benefit to using the catch exception is that we can also assert upon the actual message that is being returned. So by asserting upon the message, we can be perfectly clear that it is exactly this file that is not being found from the method of generate report that we're calling from the report processor. So I'll be using an assert equals me message to assert upon the actual message being thrown from our exception. So the expected message that we, ex that we would like to receive from our court exception is drivers, drivers.csv, no such file or directory. And then the actual message that we receive can be obtained through this court exception. So I can type court exception dot get message. And now if I run the test, I can expect it to pass. And we can see that the test is passing. If we, however, expected the second, the race file to be causing the file not found exception, we can replace that message. And as it is actually the driver's file which is causing the exception, we can now expect this test to fail. And it's failed because we expected the race performance, race CSV, to be the file not found. However, it was actually the driver's CSV file that caused the file not found exception. The last thing I'm going to do is just clean up this method very slightly so we have that same given when then sort of style to our, to our test method. So given the report processor and given the driver file name and the race file name, when we generate the report, we would like to assert that the exception thrown is file not found exception, and also that the message is driver CSV, no such file or directory. So to conclude this video, I'm just going to type chord exception down at the bottom and hit the dot sign. So now we can see the different methods that our court exception also have that we might want to use for asserting upon. So we've used the get message. We can also see the stack trace, which is a throwable, and also the get cause method. 
We can also print the stack trace uh, using a print stream or a print writer. So these are methods that you might want to explore further with the catch exception uh, package. One final proposal I'd like to make is also using mocked and spy objects. Because our exception doesn't cause the entire test to stop, one nice extra piece of information we might want to assert upon is also the method calls being made within our first method call. So given that the file exception has been thrown, we could maybe assert that other methods have not been called or they have been called, just to make sure that, you know, with this file not found exception being thrown, maybe our report is definitely not generated. So if we move back into the race report processor, we might want to assert upon this method here, the combined driver and race to report method is not being called at all. So that summarizes this video on the catch exception library. We've been able to review some of the benefits that it brings us, such as stopping our test method from completely ending once that exception is being thrown. And the benefit here is that we can then begin asserting upon the exception being thrown in a little bit more detail, such as using the get message. And it also allows us to assert upon the actual method behavior that's also been run from the tested method.